feel the work that John Diamond has done and other people have done to elaborate on the emotional side of the triangle as we talk about the triad of health, the structural, chemical, mental, and emotional side of the triangle really came um, from the original observations Dr. Garrett made using the neurovascular points for the stomach, the Bennett's neurovascular points for the stomach, which are on the forehead, halfway between the eyebrow and the hairline, or in some cases where the hairline once was, and um, right over each eye. You want to tell about how you observed that at first time? I was lecturing in uh, Portland, Oregon um, at a three-day seminar, and I was trying to bring people up to speed on the neurolymphatic reflexes and the neurovascular reflexes, which we had just sort of stumbled onto and discovered, and we were now able to find that uh, if someone uh, had a strong emotional pattern, there'd be a neurovascular reflex, or if they had um, difficulty with stomach digestion, we'd find the pectoralis clavicular muscle would be weak, and the neurovascular reflex would help that. So I said, is there, when I started to talk, I said, we'll be talking about the relationship of the neurovascular reflexes to, to muscle testing, we're talking about the neurovascular reflexes to muscle testing. And I said, that's all very high-flown language, but uh, how, do you, how do you put it down to something that you deal with every day? I said, is there anyone here, if they eat an onion sandwich uh, at 6 o'clock at night, can still taste it tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock when they get up? Burping it back up again. And a couple women raised their hand. I said, now, we're going to be talking about lymphatic reflexes, and we talk about vascular reflexes, and both of these ladies have the same trouble, difficulty digesting an onion sandwich late in the evening and continue to taste it 6 o'clock the next morning. I think it's remarkable there were two people who ate onion sandwiches <laughs> late in the evening to start with, but excuse uh, me. And they were both married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not so hard to understand now. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, do you notice that the one lady seems to have, I said, if you'll pardon the expression, you have sort of a yellowish tint to your skin. Is that evident to everyone? I said, if you look carefully. And they all said, yeah. And I said, look at the other lady. She has almost, uh, uh, in some areas, she's white, uh, paler than usual, if you compare her to, to the average. I said, uh, there's an avascularity in one, and there is a, a lymphatic stasis in the other. And I t tested and found in one woman had a uh, Neurophenic reflex for the stomach, pectoralis major clavicular muscle, and the other one had a neurovascular receptor for the same muscle. And I said to this first woman, what is your name? And she said, uh, uh, Fieldstone. And I said, and what is your name? She says, Mrs. Uh, uh, Woodbreak. I said, Fieldstone Woodbreak, okay. So I went ahead and treated them, and I said, now, we're going to be here for three days, and I said, are you two coming again tomorrow? And they said, yes. I said, we'll be able to observe how this works. I said, eat the onion sandwich tonight, and then we'll see how you come when you get in tomorrow. So... You were trying to get the improved hydrochloric acid production yeah. for the stomach, which right. is what... That's but I was not going to give them something nutritional at that time. I was just trying to show they both had the same symptom. They both had the same muscle, but for a different reason. That was my point of saying you must be a physician and diagnose the need for something and supply the need. And I, the first woman, Mrs. Uh, <coughs> Fieldstone, Mrs. Woodbrick, and the next morning I, I looked and so, so there and I decided to call the first woman and her name was Fieldstone, the other's name was uh, Woodbrick, but I made a mistake and I called her Mrs. Woodfield. I got the two names mixed up. She came, what I call, reeling up. She, you know, the result of my treatment. You know. <laughs> and she had this, I had noticed the day before, she had a big scar on her head here. Looked like she'd had a, some mucus resection for a sinus trouble like they used to do 40 years ago. And she was staggering like this. And her mouth was all askew, and she says, what manner of man are you? And I said, I'm just plain old George, you know, <laughs> just trying to get along. She said, how did you know? I said, how did I know what? She said, that was my first married name, 20 years ago. How did you know that? I said, I didn't know it. I made a mistake. 
She said, I woke up in the middle of the night. My husband was naked, dressed in war paint. He had a shotgun. He pointed at my head. He pulled the trigger and shot my head. Then he took the shotgun and blew his head off. I haven't thought of that in 20 years. How did you know about that? I said, I didn't. You know, it, was a, it was a big mistake. I looked at her, and she was the one that was so yellowish. And there were two red spots in the middle of her forehead that looked like neon lights, and just going back and off like that. And I said, what the hell is that? I know that's a vascular point for the stomach, but what the hell is that? And she was very shaken. <laughs> Not to mention mine. <laughs> so um, I finally got over that, and she then remarked the next day she was feeling much better. And she said, I can't imagine how you would know about that. I said, I didn't know about it. Big mistake in names. I went from there, I think I went home for a couple of weeks. Then I went to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And they asked me to treat a, a doctor of chiropractic there who had come to chiropractic very late in his life. Uh, he had been a very successful businessman in, uh, in uh, Albuquerque and had his health fail and tried the usual routes and went to, to a uh, local chiropractor who was able to help him a lot. And he was so impressed by the recovery he, he had and how quickly it took place even though he'd been sick for two or three years. He enrolled in chiropractic college at the age of about 50. And when he graduated, he was so imbued with the value of chiropractic, very successful, and he was a well-known personality in the, in the town. And he was um, very happy to take his kids up to Mount Scandia, which is a mountain in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he'd been having a good time with them. They were coming down the mountain. And of all things, he had his kids in the trailer they were playing. And they were coming down the mountain road. It was in daylight. And a, a Pontiac Bonneville came right at him on the mountain road relatively narrow mountain road. And he swerved to get, a, to get out of the route of the Pontiac Bonneville, who jumped over the guardrail and crashed and burned 4,000 feet down. But he had his kids in the trailer, and the trailer went over the side. He fought the car back onto the road, and the trailer bump, 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 finally got back on the road, and drove down to the bottom of the mountain, shaken, and stopped at a restaurant to have a cup of coffee, and the word shaken is very appropriate because his arms started to shake. And from that moment on, it, it didn't stop. And he had had all types of sedation, all types of therapy. And while he was telling me this, his arm was shaking tremendously. And I saw these two red spots on his forehead. And the more he told me about the accident, the more I saw these little, little red spots. And I wasn't having any sort of second sight. They were there. I wasn't any psychic stuff. I just these two little red spots. And they were just going off like, like neon lights. I said, that must have something to do with it. <laughs> That's with that lady with the ax and all that stuff. So uh, I knew there was a neurovascular receptor for the stomach, but I had no idea it had anything to do with emotions. So I I decided I'd simply put my hands like that and held the neurovascular circuit and I continued to hold it and I felt more and more pulsation and I had given him a set of keys he had he, he had his own keys but I had uh, given him some keys so I wouldn't have to look at his hand and I could hear him and I could tell and I was trying to pay attention to the sutures, I was trying to pay attention to the final sutures, trying to pay attention to a lot of stuff, but fundamentally I was trying to hold those vascular receptors to see if that had something to do with emotion rather than being a vascular receptor for the pectoralis major clavicular muscle. And I felt again that insistent pulsation and all of a sudden the key, the key jangling stopped and then stopped. Never came back again and everyone said that was watching that, it was on the lecture platform, that's marvelous. I said, that's what you bring him here for? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we learned of the emotional centers. 
and we either therapy localize it, see if it makes a difference, or have the patient think of something, and then therapy localize to see if it brings it back. And that's how that started. It started with that gentleman. Then you started either therapy localizing to the points, or sometimes just asking patients right. to think about a stressful thing, especially if they had a recurrent stomach circuit on. And then that all the rest of the emotional techniques really came from there. Your work, your, uh, the work you've done, John Dine's work you mentioned, Roger Callahan, and, and uh, what Jim Drucker has perpetuated that work, and Scott Walker's NET, and it all comes from those original observations. 